Djokovic is about to get one upped by the man himself, Roger Federer. But if you know your tactics, you should have seen this winner coming. Do you know how he set it up? What's up team, Coach Joshua here from TennisTactics.com and I'm breaking down a new tennis tactic each and every week. All the plays I show you are part of my unique tennis tactics system, where I have cataloged and coded hundreds of tennis patterns and plays. And now I'm rolling out my system to help you win more matches. This week we're looking at tactic 2-3-4-3-4, so let's draw it out. But first, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button so I can bring you more tennis tactics. Alright, so we're looking at a returning tactic that is so good for setting up forehand winners. If you're a player that likes to win points with your forehand, like Roger, you got to take notes on this point. The play looks something like this. You are the returner on the deuce side, and your opponent serves up the tee targeting your backhand. But you have a plan. Using your backhand, you make contact with the ball way out in front of your body and aim this return deep down the line. Now in this situation, the server runs to cover the court, and they double down on that backhand attack. But since they're on the run, they're not going to be able to be as aggressive, and so they land it a little more central. So for the second shot in your play, you take the offensive, and you aim your backhand deep cross court, which makes your opponent move wide. And that's the play. And this is a sneaky one. The goal with your backhand on ball four is not to hit a winner, it's not even to force an error. The goal is for you to control the center of the court and to put your opponent on the edge of the court. Rewatching our point with Federer, you can see one way to use this to your advantage. Fed plays a slice return, which keeps the ball really low and kind of skids to keep Novak nice and deep in the court. And then when he aims wide on the second one, he comes over the top of it, heavy tops from making sure it dips in and doesn't go wide. Pausing the point here, we can see that Federer has successfully run this tactic, and he controls the center of the court while Djokovic is stuck out here on the edge. So after running our play, Roger cleverly gives Novak a ball on the inside of the court, tempting him to change direction. And you can already see Roger moving over to that deuce side. Roger knows that once Novak plays line, he will have left the whole other side of the court open. And this sets up Fed's classic heavy top spin cross core forehand that pulls his opponent off the court. Now that's a tactic for another video, but it's really a textbook play. Let's watch it all again in real time. After breaking the point into pieces like this, you can really appreciate the decision making ability of the top players. Now I realize that not everyone's comfortable setting up points with their backhand. So if you're below maybe like a UTR8, but you still want to get better at running this tactic, here's what I want you to focus on first. When your opponent serves your backhand side on the deuce side and you can't run around it, focus on getting your backhand to land on this side of the line. In this situation, think of it a little less like a down the line shot and a little bit more like a cross court shot. So it's really high percentage tennis. Doing this at a minimum gets your opponent into the ad side of the court. Your opponents probably won't slap a running backhand down the line winner. Most likely they'll roll it cross court or middle. So after you hit this, fade over to the ad side a little bit and look to hit your forehand as soon as possible. If that's your strength, but it probably is. But the more you build confidence in your backhand, the more interested you're going to be in running this full play. Now let's analyze just how effective this play is. Remember, we want to evaluate tactics in terms of how risky they are to execute and how much damage they do to your opponent. I'm going to give this one a risk rating of medium. From an execution standpoint, it's a little risky to be the first one to hit to the outer thirds of the court. That's really what makes this an aggressive play. But there is some risk that comes along with that. And this is especially true because we're using your backhand to do it, which is usually less developed. But it is a long line, cross court shot, so you've got space to make this. Just remember you're already attacking with direction, so we don't need to overdo it by adding too much power as well well. In fact, I'd focus on topspin more than anything else when it comes to ball four. It's all about that dip. From a position standpoint, you're both locked in a backhand to backhand rally, so it's fairly neutral there. But you should be controlling the center of the court, which is usually a good thing. The main risk associated with this play is if you drop this ball short and it's wide, your opponent now has a greater angle to hit into on your side of the court. But whatever, hit it deep. As far as how much damage this can do to your opponent, this is an aggressive play. Using your backhand to target the outer third of the ad side of the court right at the start of the point, this is aggressive for sure. And if you pull this off, you've put your opponent in an uncomfortable position and opened up a huge hole on the other side of the court. This is such a good setup play. And I would keep it that way. I think for this opening tactic, I wouldn't make it your goal to win the point in the first four balls. I would make it your goal to set up the point in the first four balls and then win the point in balls five through eight, just like Roger did. This play is especially useful when your opponent is targeting your backhand on their serve, when your opponent guards the ad side, and when you like to set up forehand winners, which... Who doesn't? This is a sneaky tactic that almost no one pays attention to, but if you do it right, you'll rack up tons of points. Remember, tennis is really a game of movement and risk management, so thinking through your tactics is a great way to take your game to the next level. Now that you understand how to use this tactic, the next step is to hit the courts. Give it a try. And let me know how it goes in the comments. If you want to learn more tennis tactics, I'll be dropping a ton of free content here on YouTube. So go ahead, like this video, subscribe to my channel, maybe ring the bell.
I'll be dropping video lessons from my tennis tactics library at least once a week, and you don't want to miss them. And if you want even more tennis tactics, head on over to my website, tennistactics.com, and sign up for my email list. Until then, hit your targets. We'll talk soon.